So anyway, bravo on working on it, on that, and the fact that you've gotten a lot of that stuff in a pretty good place. Um, is there a passage you want to play again? Could you maybe try, you know, I, I mean, if you don't want to pick one, I will. Yeah, go for it. Um, can you do um, starting at 114 and going straight through 129? I'm going to stop you um, right there. Um, the again, the sound is really soft, and I'm guess. Are you? Do you have? Um, you, you have the filters turned off on Zoom, right? I thought I did. I didn't turn them back on ever, but who knows? Maybe when I update. I don't know what to tell you, but you know, maybe just check. Um. What? Wait, wait a minute. It says it's using the. better. Um, For some reason, it switched my settings so it was using the computer's microphone and not my external one. Okay, well, whatever it is, I mean, I'm just saying, we've been doing this for a while. It's your job to make sure this is set up properly. I didn't know that, that it had switched it. I, I didn't switch it. I don't know. 
Okay, yeah, that's weird. So I, I don't know what to tell you, but um, anyway, let's. I, I'm not mad. I'm just. I'm just saying. You know, it's your lesson, so you know. No, it's, it's, it's okay. Now, look, let's try to get at this now. Come on. Uh, so the left hand there, can I just hear the left hand alone on that first two measures? Sure. Yeah. Um, just, um, you know, the whole thing. Um, can you play the whole thing? Uh, you know, it calls for pedal, right? Yeah. Um, can you play the whole thing marcato all the way through? You know what I mean? Okay. Big full drop on every note. So, um, again, it, we're hampered by the sound issue here, okay? Because I'm trying to get at this thing with you. But when you, when you do D sharp to E, it sounds like you're doing like a, a, a real legato and the E is soft. So... They're all, they should all be just as full and big. Now, I realize there's a crescendo, but it should be a crescendo that goes over the course of the two measures. So, bum, ba, ba, pa, pa, pa. The articulation should be basically the same on all the notes. Okay, I, I just want to make sure, let me just hear if you play that again, see if you can really listen to that spot. No, but you see, that's already a little bit of instructive. I, I don't mean, you know, you, this is what we're doing. We're exaggerating different parts of the, the, the attack to try to listen to the sound. So when I hear that line, I, you know, I just want to make sure that none of the notes disappear. I mean, it should be all, you should be able to hear all the notes. Yeah. Um, so just, um, it's a direction. There's a direction to the line, but none of them are, are weak. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, just listen when you get to that spot. I was hearing that. And then when you get to, um, I want to hear you just, maybe you can just start on 116 and just do three measures. as you know, uh, when you get to measure 117 in the middle, the right hand jumps down an octave. Yep. You need to get there faster. Yeah, see, I see your, your spirit drops. <laughs> but, you know, that's the da, 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 pa, 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 right? You know, you do the right hand alone for me. Let me see you do that. You're up to 117? 116 through 118. to be practiced. Yep. Because what's happening is you're cutting yourself too much slack there. And your left hand seems ready, more or less, but you know, don't ignore the right hand. <laughs> well, you know, the, it's funny, like, I don't think that right hand's that difficult, but it needs, you know, it's like when you're playing it, you're, you're doing something where it's just, there's just, you're, it's like it, you could have, there's, these little things could give you more of an edge in this passage. Uh, just making sure that you, you work that. Um, let's see. Just an F sharp chord. 
And it's just over and over and over again. So when you do the skip, it's not an articulation. You're not articulating the skip. It's just part of the stream. So get your hand ready, you know, when you're doing it, as it, so it's all flowing. Yeah, just it's not a it's so. Um, but I, I can't, you know, there comes a point, like I was saying, it's hard to tell if the pianist is doing an interpretive thing or it's a technical thing. But whatever it is, compositionally, I think it, it should not interfere. Because the, the overall gesture, again, is that three measure group that needs to be, you know, it needs to be organic, an organic three measure group. The same with the following, the A flat chord, which is probably a little harder because you have a white key in the middle, but, you know, <laughs> when, I, when you have the F sharp one, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like all in the, all in the black keys. There is, there is a, you know the Chopin E2? The black key E2. There is a, there is a shtick where this guy, Nick, Nick Slonimsky, would get an orange. He, he would play that on the black keys using an orange going up and down. That reminds me of this, because you're all in the, sh the sharps. So, you know, there's no reason to slow yourself down there. I mean, it should be just blah, 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 blah. Even if you miss a few notes, that's another thing. One of my teachers, when he said he did some kind of a competition once where he played Rachmaninoff concerto. I, I, I don't play Rachmaninoff, so I'm not going to try to play the passage, but the comment from one of the judges was very expressive wrong notes, you know. And that's, that's kind of, and he said, yes, he said, that's exactly right. You know, there is a sense in which wrong notes can be expressive. So I, I just worry that you, you become worried about the wrong thing. You know, the right hand should not slow you down here. That's, all, that's the sermon, okay? That's the moral of the story. Yeah, but you see, look, again, uh, again, I'm trying to cheerlead you because I'm just saying, you know, it, it may seem like you were flogging a dead horse, but there's still more to get from this, from this place. So you definitely, I think, can really do that work. I always sometimes, sometimes it's nice to have somebody else being like, yeah, remember that thing that you thought that you noticed? Yeah, yeah, you got to do that thing. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and again, um, I, I wish, you know, there's some level of urgency that, that you know, I, I don't know, again, you've probably done a lot of performing, um, but if you come to a performance and you're not ready, you know, there should be a little bit of fear. <laughs> I, that, and it's the same thing with a passage like this. It's like, you, I, for me, I cannot have this like detached thing. Oh, my, my right hand's late. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> That's a different. So I mean, you know, you really have to be able to get it so that it's. Uh, and this this passage here, this whole section, it's like the culminating point of the whole piece. So it's got to be very um, compelling. You cannot be in the middle and, and treating it like a, an intellectual exercise. That's not what we're doing, okay? We're trying to get it so that it really feels like an, that overwhelming, sublime gesture. And that's what's important about this whole section. So keep thinking about that, you know, how it all kind of feels and reflect on it. That's part of that reflection thing, where in five years you'll come back and think about the piece and you'll be like, yeah, that's how that's supposed to sound. And then you work it up again. It's like, oh, I remember this. It's like, Oh, I gotta make sure. You'll remember, you know. It won't just be intuitive, it'll also be memory. You'll remember the places that didn't feel right. And then you will anticipate that when you go to rework the piece. And again, when you play other list pieces, you'll see similar passages and you'll already know. Okay, I know what needs to happen here. I can see compositionally, you know, he's got a line and there's just a chord, you know, that kind of thing. So these, this, believe me, these are things that um, once you kind of go through it a few times, it does get a lot easier because you recognize it. You recognize the, what the, the nature of the passage is calling for. 
And that doesn't mean that you always know everything right away. There's a particularity to each piece. But there are also general style things. And this is definitely one of those places when people hear this music and, you know, there's like a whole bunch of list fans out there. They expect the, that, what we're talking about. They expect it to be like that. They don't want it. If they hear like a hitch in there somewhere in the right hand, it's going to seem odd, you know. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you can live with those ideas. Um, all right, and I guess we're out of time. So um, there were a few other little details, but I'm thinking a lot of it had to do with your trill struggles. But you know, I still, I still, I still wanted to hear more um, in this part. The way you manage that, again, vocal. I, it sounded well. It sounded like is what I heard. Okay, I went. It's a vocal line. It's a singing line. It's not da 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 da. -da, -da. It's not it. Um, so just be careful of when you have like a little place like that where the notes suddenly get faster in the melody. They're still full. Da -da 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 -da. Manage and practice it like, like that. Um, uh, and you know, anytime you have something like that, anything like, that's like, um, like a slurp, da -da -da -da. again, elegant, an elegant line, not a jab, never a jab when you have those. Uh, and it's not, it's not just a question of balance, it's a question of how you manage the, the way you play it physically, the way you move to play the, le the line, the melodic line. Um, so and I wish I could go through and compliment all the good things too, but I want to make sure I don't miss the, the, those little things, okay? So there's a lot of little, little places where you were sensitive and you were smart, so I'm sort of ignoring all the good stuff. <laughs> but, okay, we should probably stop. Um, so that's very cool. The next, yeah. um, so as always, if you have anything you want to talk about, you can just send me an email or you can even call. Sure. Um, so probably email is the safest. I, I actually had a job this week. I, I did, we did some recording sessions with the Lexington Symphony. And um, so yeah, it was all socially distanced recording at Cary Hall in Lexington. Um, so that was weird. You know, it was, it was hot, I had to wear a tuxedo and play difficult music and um, accompany students. They had some high school students in there. Um, but it went off well and I actually, they sent a paycheck, so that's nice. Um, but um, in, in general, uh, it was interesting ha actually having some, some actual work to do as a musician. It's been an interesting moment. Um, I don't know how you, you factor that in. You've got other life concerns right now, but... Um, <laughs> We have, there's a Zoom, I do with my church, they, we've been having Zoom conferences for various committees that I have to be on. And uh, if the, one of the people in the conference is a little hard of hearing, they tend to command the floor most of the time because they don't realize other people are trying to talk. <laughs> so that they're like, and they're, they said they tweak up the thing really loud so their like voice comes booming through. <laughs> Um, and I'm usually just sitting there. I'm like, I'm going like this. I'm like the last one to get to say anything, okay. <laughs> which is yeah, which is probably okay. Like a piece of paper or something. Be like, yeah, I know. Well, it's <laughs> like I'm starting to get like visual aids. You know, it's like here's Verdi. <laughs> See, here he is. <laughs> I, I have to, my, and, you know, my my mother's sister, my aunt, gave me this along with a Chopin. Of course, I had to have to have Chopin as well. Wait, yeah. I, I have yeah, I saw that. That's what inspired me to do this. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I used to have, my teacher, when I was a child, used to give out the little chalk. They were, like, made out of chalk. Oh. Do you know? And then later on, they came up with plastic ones. Oh. You know, but, yeah, they had, like, a little bust, and then you, every, like, at the end of the year, everybody got one. It was, like, in a little box, and you, you know. It's, and they, they usually looked horrible. I mean, they didn't look like the composer at all. This, the Chopin one is ridiculous. You know, I don't think he really looks looked like this. And this looks more like so like a movie star look. You know, he's got yeah, like. I was going to say he looks like one of those like gothic authors or something like. That. Yeah, exactly. He's got the bow, the bow tie and stuff. Um, no, I, and the hair looks very you know very Hollywood. You know, <laughs> right? But. Um, right, it's Colin Firth playing Chopin. 
Colin Firth playing. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly right. Yeah. So, anyway, we can have fun with that, too. All right. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. Yes. And um, good luck to you. And keep going. You've done a very fine job this year, and we've put up with some really rough stuff. So you're, you're, you're doing great. Um, just, you know, just keep it, keep it alive. Keep hope alive. Keep All right. Yeah. All right, Paul. Okay. Uh, see you in a couple weeks. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.